Hi, and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. If you ask somebody if they want to live in a fair, equal and just society, the vast majority of people reply with a resounding yes. However, as self-evident as that response is, history tells us that such societies very rarely form naturally. In fact, it would be fair to suggest that even in a developed society such as the UK, that discrimination, bias and intolerance still exist. This is why this presentation on human resource legislation is so important, because it is through the legal system that such prejudiced views can be challenged and hopefully eliminated. So what are we going to learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we're going to find out about the features of current HR legislation. OK, let's get started with our first question, which is, what is human resource legislation? Human resource legislation refers to all the laws passed by government on workplace employment and covers areas such as discrimination, pay, contracts of employment and health and safety. In short, these laws set out the legal minimum standard which all organisations operating in the UK must meet if they are not to break the law. So with that, let's look at our first piece of employment legislation and ask, what is the Equality Act? The Equality Act is an anti-discrimination law which merged together and strengthened previous legislation passed over the last 50 years into a single comprehensive law that protects individuals against discrimination and promotes equality of opportunity for all. How it does this is by making it illegal to discriminate against anybody based on certain characteristics they may have. For example, under the law, nine protected characteristics have been identified which cannot be used to treat someone unfairly or differently to anybody else. These protected characteristics are age, disability, race, gender, sexual orientation, religion or belief, pregnancy or maternity, marriage or civil partnership, and gender reassignment. And as you can see, given everyone possesses at least one of these protected characteristics, the Equality Act defends everyone from unfair treatment. However, as well as defining what personal characteristics cannot be discriminated against, the Equality Act also outlines methods of discrimination which are illegal. For example, where an individual is treated less favourably than someone else because they hold a protected characteristic, such as being told they haven't got a job because they are gay, this is called direct discrimination. Whereas when someone with a protected characteristic is disadvantaged because of a certain rule or procedure, this is called indirect discrimination. For example, if a job advert stated only people under 5 foot tall can apply, men would be disadvantaged compared to women. Further still, unwanted behaviour related to a protected characteristic, for example, a man commenting on a woman's figure or touching her inappropriately, is also illegal and is defined as harassment. And finally, treating an individual unfairly because they have complained about discrimination or harassment, for example, calling a person a snitch because they have made a complaint, is called victimisation and is also illegal. Now, as you can see, the Equality Act is incredibly wide-ranging, meaning there is no excuse for behaviour or actions which are discriminatory. Even so, in a small number of cases where an organisation or an individual has been unwilling to change their behaviour, the Equality and Human Rights Commission can investigate and then take court action to enforce the provisions of the Equality Act are adhered to. This is a really important point. Because what this shows is that an organisation cannot just pay lip service to the Equality Act. It must take action and put in place measures to ensure it fully
complies with the law. Okay, let's now move on to another piece of workplace legislation and ask what is the Health and Safety at Work Act? The Health and Safety at Work Act is the UK's premier piece of legislation on safety, health and welfare in the workplace. It sets out a wide range of duties and responsibilities that employers have in terms of ensuring health and safety, not only of their own employees, but also anybody else impacted by the workplace. For example, customers. As such, under the Act, an employer must ensure their machinery and equipment is not only safe to use, but also regularly maintained. More than that though, they must also provide training to employees so they can carry out their work safely and ensure, where necessary, that supervision is in place when dangerous work is being carried out. This would particularly be the case if dangerous substances or equipment were being used. As you would expect, in such circumstances, an employer will not only be required to provide the safety equipment and clothing needed by employees to carry out such tasks in a safe way, but also ensure adequate signage is displayed around the workplace, detailing areas where health and safety dangers exist. However, signage in itself is not enough. An organisation must also maintain its workplace by keeping it clean, tidy and free of avoidable risks. For example, ensuring inventory is stored safely and that walkways in the workplace are not slippery. As you would expect, given the number of responsibilities an employer has, they must create a written health and safety policy which details how they will meet their duties and obligations. Moreover, given the importance of this policy, it should not only be shared with employees periodically, but also regularly updated based on risk assessments undertaken by the business. Nevertheless, and this is one of the major strengths of this legislation, health and safety in the workplace is a dual responsibility, in that it is not only an employer who is responsible, but also employees as well. For example, under the Act, employees must follow the safety instructions and training they have been given by their employer when carrying out their job. But also, they must carry out their job with reasonable care and not put themselves or others at risk through carelessness or dangerous behaviour. And finally, they must cooperate with and follow organisational procedures put in place to ensure the Health and Safety at Work Act is met. For example, in terms of maintaining a safe working environment, an employee would be expected to report any issues they felt could cause a health and safety issue. For example, a water spillage on a walkway or boxes of inventory unsafely stored. Now, as with the Equality Act, a regulatory body called the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, has been set up to enforce the Health and Safety at Work Act, but also to provide advice and assistance to help organisations improve safety in their workplaces. As such, there is no excuse for breaching the law. However, should an organisation do so, it will be investigated and potentially face prosecution. OK, let's now move on to look at our final piece of workplace legislation and ask, what is the National Minimum Wage Act? The National Minimum Wage Act is a law that sets the legal minimum an employee can be paid per hour by an organisation and is based on age and experience. For example, in terms of experience, there is a rate for apprentices in their first year of training, after which they then move on to the four rates based on age. One for under 18s, one for 18 to 20 year olds, one for 21 to 24 year olds, and a final one termed the national living wage rate for those aged over 25. As you'd expect, these rates are increased annually by the government passing national minimum wage and national living wage regulations through Parliament. Now, 
Although most organisations will pay their workers according to the rate set, some may choose not to. And if this is the case, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, HMRC, is responsible for investigating these businesses and if underpayment is found, serving them with a notice to not only pay their workers correctly, but also to make back payments for the period over which employees were underpaid. Of course, in situations where serious or deliberate underpayment is found, a business may also be fined and face court action. Okay, so what did we learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we found out about the features of human resource legislation. Although it is 50 years since the Equal Pay Act was passed in 1970, there are still situations where men, women and minorities are paid unequally for doing the same job. Likewise, there are still workplaces where discrimination exists and where workers operate in an unsafe and dangerous environment. Nevertheless, this does not mean that human resource legislation should be abandoned, because examples of workplace discrimination, unequal pay and unsafe working practices have all statistically reduced over the last 50 years. As such, the aim of employment legislation must not only be improved compliance, but also a strengthening of those laws to ensure they cannot be ignored, avoided or undermined by unscrupulous organisations.